Hello folks, this is a video segment that I'm planning to do on uh, something called combined case. On, on, this, uh, on this side, there is quite a few video, uh, video clips that I've made for uh, use of uh, 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 CATIA to do finite term analysis. And uh, if you look at it carefully, you see that I've, uh, there are videos on static case, frequency case, buckling case, and down here, harmonic dynamic response case and transient dynamic response case. However, I have not done anything with these middle five uh, uh, features. So today I'm going to do the combined case situation. And then hopefully down the road, I'm going to do some uh, other ones, short ones for the other situations. Now, uh, what is this combined case problem? So let's go ahead and look at a problem of uh, this type. Suppose we have a cantilever beam, which is uh, uh, fixed at the left down end point and subjected to a downward force of P at the right tip. Now, this is a standard uh, problem, classical problem in strength of material. You can actually do it under the small uh, strain and assumption, small strain assumptions. Uh, it's going to be uh, the analytical solution is given right there. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at the same problem, except that the, the tip is not uh, loaded with a concentrated force, but instead perhaps a concentrated moment, if not, then you can also do the problem and the exact solution is given right there. So let's hypothetically say that we run these two problems with uh, specific values of P and M. So suppose P 10 pound and M, M uh, 200 pound, pound inch. Now, and we want to, we can, we can run these things individually in CATIA and then uh, and then if, if we're interested to take for example a situation where uh, the load P is 20 times bigger and load M uh, constant in the moment M is 10 times bigger then because of the linearity assumption what we can do we can take the the, the result of the first case multiply by 20 uh, and result the second case multiply by 10 and then add them up that's what really combined case does. So you run the problem once under this load, you run a problem with a different load, and then you want to combine these taking uh, so many of so many times of the first result plus so many times of the second result and add them up. Okay? So the only reason by the way I'm doing a I'm going to be doing this thing in a beam because beams are uh, fairly easy to model and then we can compare it with the analytical solution. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, create this thing. Uh, let me see now. So uh, we start with a part file. And then uh, immediately save it. Uh, file save management. Uh, save as. Uh, part one. And let's make it. So on a convenient plane, plane, on that vertical plane, I will draw a, a, a sketch, basically a line, 20, inch, 20 inches long. Let me make it 20 inches. That was the, the length of my, uh, my beam. Okay, 20 inches. Okay, exit. Now, because I'm drawing this geometry as a sketch, I need to join it, otherwise I won't be able to mesh it. If I had done this thing as a wireframe, for example, a line in space, you, don't, you would not need to join. But here, notice that I select this thing, sketch, and I want to join. So I have to, otherwise I won't be able to mesh it. Now, let's apply uh, material to this thing. I'm using steel. So, metal, steel. Go down here and put it on the part, and this is it. Okay, so uh, we're going to switch workbenches, analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. Uh, Katia immediately by default puts a static case, which is one of the things that I want to do, and then we're going to mesh it right there, mesh it with beam elements. Uh, I don't know, let's make it uh, maybe uh, 10 elements, so uh, 20 uh, element size of, uh, make it 2, okay, 
And uh, if you look at the mesh here, put the cursor there, right click mesh visualization, you will see 10 elements. So uh, let's see now, this is element one and all the way to the end, which is element 10 between, uh, between these two, two nodes, element 10. And on this side, it uh, looks like element one. Okay, fine. Now deactivate the mesh. And let's put the uh, cross-sectional property on that. So I'm going to click on 1D property. It's already cylindrical beam and the radius is 0.5 because I've already, already drawn this thing. And because it is a uh, it is, because it is a cylindrical beam or circular cross-section, there is no need there is no need to select an orientation point. It's going to do it for us right there. Okay. Very good. Uh, now, what else do we need? Uh, we need a left end is clamped. And the right end, I apply a force at this tip in the downward direction, minus 10 pounds. Notice that this is what I wanted. Okay, so obviously we can run this thing. And it's not a big deal, so we run it. All of them. Very simple problem. It's going to deflect right, right here. And downward deflection, maximum deflection uh, is uh, 0 0.0188. Now, if I uh, change this thing to average ISO, it shows a nice uh, color contour. Okay, now uh, I'm done with uh, this case. Uh, by the way, I'm going to rename this thing to say rename so properties. I'm going to call it static concentrated concentrated static case concentrated force force. Okay, very good. Now I want to repeat the same problem except that uh, at this end I don't want to apply a downward force, but I want to apply a concentrated moment. So what we do, warning, what we can do is insert a static case, another static case. Now we can use the old restraints. For example, I know that this restraint is going to, is not going to change. I can use the old one, or I can do all new ones. I'm going to use all new ones. Everything is new. And uh, by the way, I'm going to rename this thing to be uh, concentrated moment. How about that? Concentrated moments. Okay. All right, let's do it. So the left end is clamped. I'm repeating that. It was not necessary. I could have selected that restraint, but that's okay. And then concentrated moment. The moment is uh, under the load toolbar, under the distributed load that we use to apply a concentrated force. There is a moment here, and I select this tip. Oh, by the way, I've changed the I've changed the the, the units of uh, of uh, moment so that it actually pound force inch, and I already put the correct value there in my when I before I made the video I ran this thing make sure everything is work, working, and there we are. I'm going to run this. And it's done. So uh, here's the deflection. Notice that when you apply a concentrated moment, actually this thing goes up, right? So when you apply a concentrated force, it goes down, the tip goes down, but when you apply a concentrated, concentrated moment in the direction shown, this thing goes up. Well, that's okay. So basically we have done two problems here. There is a concentrated force and there is a concentrated moment. Now, what we want to do is suppose that we want to uh, we want to take the results of the concentrated force multiplied by a factor of uh, one, okay, which is not going to change anything, and concentrated moment multiplied by a factor of one again, so not really, and then simply add them up. You can think about this thing as having a superposition. In other words, uh, uh, the first the result of the first first run added to the result of the second run. Okay, so here's where you you actually say insert combined case combined case okay now uh you can double click on it it says okay go pick your cases okay see that analysis sets now 
for this we have to select the uh, the, the cases, you cannot, you, you cannot go and select any of these other stuff, but you see, this is the result of the, the first one, and it allows you to put a, a, a multiplier here, so I said one, okay, and for the second one, it's going to be this, but the multiplier also wanted to be, you have to, I guess, uh, right click, select this, right click, and then you say uh, edit coefficient, and the coefficient here, you put a one down there. See that down here, right, right there, one. Okay, good. Oops. All right, good. So we say all right, and then we're gonna combine them. Combine them doesn't mean you're gonna run the analysis, analysis of the first one and second one. If I had done multiplication, uh, if I had done superposition, in other words, if I had done the problem with this applied and the moment applied, then I would have to run the FDA. But here you're not running it. So click on the uh, calculator. This is not going to run the finite element analysis. Uh, that, that's that's fine. Let's try it again. And it's done. It's combined it. So now let's look at the uh, deflection right there. All right, how do I know this is right or not? Okay, so what we're gonna do is the following. I'm gonna compare this with the result of this, uh, the, uh, the uh, analytical solution from strength of material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the displacement at the midpoint of the beam. Okay, now the midpoint of the beam is, uh, uh, let's see now. The best way of doing that is uh, double click on uh, double click on that. Uh, say don't show the deformed shape. Then it's very easy to find where the midpoint deflection is. There is a node here, right in the middle, right there. There's a node. Okay, right there. If I if I hide if I hide this uh, this uh, cross sectional property, hide it. Right, right there. There is a node there. This is the node. This is the midpoint of of, of, of the beam. Okay. Uh, let's actually make sure one more time. This is correct. Uh, let me bring the property into the displays. Uh, where are the properties here? Right, right there. I'm hiding it. So let me get it back. Right, right there. Okay, so uh, if I go to a math cat sheet that I've created here, I put all the properties there, and I'm using coefficient one and one. Okay, so this is the formula for displacement of a point loaded cantilever beam. This is a moment loaded and loaded uh, cantilever beam, and these are the these are the displacement of each of them at the midpoint, L over 2. And I'm using coefficient of 1 and 1, so just add them up. So maybe I should have said actually here, uh, I'm going to do alpha. I forgot to do alpha. Alpha times. And this one beta times. Of course, it doesn't matter when alpha and beta are born. Uh, you're still okay. Uh, and, but I'm going to choose those later on for... To be different values. Okay, so it looks like the midpoint of the beam should go up by the amount 1 1.17 10 to the minus 3. So let's find that. If I put the cursor there, let me hide this. Let me hide that. Right there. Point zero zero one one six, which is Right there. Uh, this is because of the, uh, the because of the rounding. So let me use three decimals. Oops. Uh, what did I do here? A format number, number of decimal places, scientific. Right. Point one one seven. Okay. So obviously in the analysis here, uh, in the analysis here, it has been rounded, in the CATIA, it has been rounded to uh, point, uh, one, point zero zero one six. Now, okay, so let me, 
Oh, I'm going to put this thing back to three. Good. So suppose that I make the coefficient here, uh, let's make it uh, 100, 100 times, okay? 100 times of the first result plus uh, one time the second result, okay? So let's check. We go here and uh, go to the go to your uh, combined case this coefficient uh, i'm going to say right click uh, edit coefficient right here or uh, the other window would have opened on the right bottom corner so you're going to make it 100 edit right here 100 okay good all right run it That's fine. Okay, deflection. And uh, where is that? Uh, uh, that was the middle point was I believe right there. <laughs> Once again, let me show, let me see where that thing was. Yep, right, right there is the middle point. So uh, deactivate, hide it. So, Look at what it is, it's point, uh, point 0.58, point 0.5, point oh 0.05, what is it? I think it's point 0.58, is that right? Yeah, point 0.58. So let's look at the, uh, right there, see that? Downward, point 0.58, round. So, I don't use this feature in Katia very often. But at least you know what it does. You can uh, you can actually take the results of one analysis and another analysis as long as the geometry is the same. You can add them. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's do the following. Let's do the following here. Uh, for example, if you go there, I'm going to finish this uh, analysis, this problem. Uh, uh, Okay, so let's go here, deactivate this first. Go to restrain. This one is clamped, but the other one, see the other one, the other one, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna clamp it. I'm gonna make it a simple pin and pin, okay? So uh, a pin and a roller, for example. So uh, uh, actually, yeah, to, I'm gonna make this thing, pin uh, and the other one on a roller okay so uh, this left side is okay but uh, right side the right side uh, okay I have to go there which, uh, this was the the second case right static case so let's go there Current, current set. Now I can go and uh, add, add more constraints here. So let me make this thing a uh, user defined. This end, I'm going to make it only go in the horizontal direction. Okay, so basically it becomes a roller. So uh, leave uh, displacement y alone. Oh, I'm sorry, free. And uh, the other one's uh, the other one uh, fixed, so that that this becomes basically a roll in the y direction. And I'm going to run this. I'm going to insert insert another insert another uh, combined case, okay? And for the uh, for the the sets, I'm going to select. Uh, the first one, which was cantilever point loaded. Unit one, take a factor of multiply five factor of one. And for the second one is uh, this one. I just remember, I just changed the restraints for this. So I made this, this end is uh, clamped. The other end is, uh, uh, is uh, pinned, for example. Okay. So uh, that one, and you can change the, uh, the coefficient, right click, edit. I'm going to make it one. Uh, 
Okay, I'll run it. Buffer right and uh, deflect deflection. There we are. So this time you can see that it actually. Uh, let's change this thing to uh, average ISO. Don't show me the form shape. Okay, put it in the front view so that I can detect it easily. And uh, show me the property because I want to know where the middle point is right there. Okay, so it's right there. And needless to say, if I hide this thing, the value is going to be something else. Uh, you cannot compare these things with uh, my MathCAD worksheet here because this assumes that you're using a point load at the right side and a point for concentrated moment at the right side. Okay, what I just did, but you, the point is that the, the geometry must be the same, but the restraints do not have to be. But then, of course, this may not make any sense. Okay? That's it.